Hello guys and welcome back to the How to Animate YouTube channel and it's going to be episode 2 of this dev blog as I work on this little game I've been doing uh, called Lipseed and if you followed the last video you see that we went ahead and created a basic movement set for this um, so idle walk sprint are all in and working so in this episode I would like to have a look at the jump as you can see when I hit jump nothing happens at the moment uh, the old animations aren't really going to work for what I have in mind so we're going to have to go back into Maya and rework them um, but this is a couple of things I want to do inside of Unreal before we get going um, first being this when I rotate the character slowly actually have it face the camera that's not really what I want I want this to feel kind of old school in 2d so once you push the button she's gonna flip around straight away um, this towel is gonna be dynamic so that will give a little bit of animation for when she turns uh, so let's go have a look how we can do that um, so I'm just gonna select her and open up her character blueprint so anything to do with this kind of stuff is usually in the character movement and what we're looking for is this rotation rate so this allows you to set the rotation rate of the character so at the moment it's 720 so that's why we're getting that weird thing where we can kind of just tap the button and she's facing the camera so I'm going to up this by an awful lot and compile and save so when we go back to the game now push the button she snaps around um, so what I'll probably end up doing is put a little bit of uh, animation on this as well just to smooth it out it's very snappy at the moment and with the tail animation as well it will it will look fine um, so there's one thing I want to do before we go into Maya and that's uh, have a look at this camera so the default camera here it's not really what I want it's way too close and I also want to sort of lower it make it a bit flatter so that's also done in the character blueprint so if we have a look at the viewport and zoom out you see we have this camera here so you can actually just move this like so um, so I'm going to bring it slightly out and slightly lower okay, let's give that a go the game there we go that's that's closer to what I'd like so it's going to make testing a bit easier especially for the jump great okay let's get into Maya and have a look at this jump so here's my character inside of Maya uh, I had a look at the old jump and it was really not working at all um, so the only pose I could really salvage from it was this uh, so you want to make sure when you do game jumps that uh, you don't have an anticipation uh, a lot of people make that mistake they try and put a nice anticipation on and they get it in game it just feels terrible because you push the button and uh, the character anticipates and it just takes forever to get up in the air so especially for this kind of 2d side scroller game uh, we want it to have nice responsive uh, controls we want to actually come from the stretch pose um, we also need to consider that this jump going to be on the spot or is it going to be moving forward would you like um, two separate jumps depending on how fast they're going I think for now we're just going to try and do one jump so we're going to modify this so it could work either running or straight up in the air so I'm just going to straighten her up a little bit okay, I'm going to try and get her into a slightly more stretched pose okay great I think I'm quite happy with that for now uh, so when animating a game jump I usually find it it's best to put the upward motion into what we're doing here um, and then strip it off afterwards uh, this is going to be basically done on the spot. It's actually Unreal that gives us the up and down motion of the jump. Um, but we still want to kind of approximate it within this animation and then strip it out afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to have her come up in the air here as if she was jumping. I had to turn the recording off because it was slowing down my frame rate for some reason. 
Um, so, I've been working on this. Starting to get there. Yeah, so I generally like to do like a tuck pose at the top of jumps. So at the apex you kind of pull the feet in, it's like a V shape. Um, kind of reads quite well. Cool. Um, yeah, so with the landing, it would be nice to have two separate landings on this as well, depending on if you're moving forward or if you're not. Uh, I guess we're going to assume that the player's released at this point. So this is going to be just a land on the spot for now. We'll see how that feels in game. If it feels like we need to do a a land with a run, then we can go ahead and do that as well and put conditions on it. Cool, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off now. So guys, here's the first go at the jump. It's a little bit rough, but I tend to just try and get it in game and see how it feels and then we'll go back tomorrow and tweak from there. Okay, so now it's time to get this exported into its various pieces and into game. So I'm just going to quickly explain how this works. Um, so I could export the whole thing and put it in and put it on a button. Uh, it wouldn't play very well though, that's the only thing. Um, Generally it's split up into a few different sections so they can all play out at various points in the jump. So we've got our launch, so up until about I'd say 5 would be our launch. So you push the button, that happens. Um, then we have the sort of in-air kind of idle. Um, some people like to put this on a loop. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because a jump kind of tends to play out a bit more like this um, so if you was to kind of pick a pose here and then kind of loop it and and you know it just wouldn't look very good to be honest um, what I tend to do is if if there is going to be a loop in here say if the character jumps off a big cliff and then starts falling um, I'd prefer to do a full loop so I'm not going to do that right now but eventually it's kind of like from this pose I guess um, I'd do a loop of her sort of flailing, so her arms would be going in a circular motion as she starts heading towards the floor, and then when she comes in contact, that's when we play the land. Um, but for now, we're just going to do three separate animations just to get this working. Um, so I'm going to go to my outliner here. So I've got my character root joint one. Okay, this is a group, but when you export, uh, into Unreal, this will be classed as a bone, and this is already in my hierarchy of my character. So to get this to work, I actually need to strip off all the up motion and the forward motion, because this is going to be a on-the-spot animation. We're going to let Unreal deal with the actual physics of getting her up in the air. Uh, I'm going to have to tweak those quite a bit in Unreal to get them looking as nice as this. I think the, the default values are very, very floaty. Um, so to get this kind of hang time and then quick down, we're going to have to do some, some tweaking of the values. But for now, let's get this exported. So um, I didn't do this on camera, but basically I went through, selected everything in the hierarchy, went to keys, bake simulation, everything on ones, and went through and baked everything. Okay, so it's generally a good idea to save before you do this and make sure you've got a backup because this basically breaks it away from the rig. Um, so at this point if I was trying to move the controls none of them will work so all the connections are now broken basically. So there's no way back from this. Um, so make sure you've got a, a file saved somewhere so you can go back and tweak the animation if you want. Great, so the character root joint 1 is fixed on the origin so everything's on zero here. Um, so basically if we move the root now you see everything because everything's in a hierarchy we can basically just strip all the motion off of translate Y here. Um, so the only two keys we need are this front one and the one at the end. So we don't want to be messing around with the one at the end because this is her idle. Okay, so it'll look something like this. And we also want to strip off translate Z. Um, so we can just go ahead and delete everything apart from the first key. Great, so now that animation is on the spot. OK, 
Okay. Right, from here, um, could go through and export each chunk manually, but uh, we're going to use the game exporter just to make this a bit easier. Okay, so here's the game exporter. Uh, very handy tool. Um, so you can basically add clips in here. So one, two, five will be the launch. Okay, coming along, and the land starts about, say, 12. So we're going to make the the top part 6 to 12 and then we'll make the land 13 all the way through to 22 brilliant okay so let's think about the names um, there a little bit um, I decided to add a forward thing at the end of this uh, I've got a feeling that this kind of jump won't work on the spot Okay, so this will be a jump if she is moving at a certain speed uh, going forward. Um, and then we might need a, a separate animation um, just for when you hit the jump button and you're barely moving. She kind of, she's going to be a different kind of jump where she kind of launches herself straight up in the air and then lands. So yeah, this is going to work for now. But for now, just to get this in-game and working, we're just going to do this. So uh, simply select the path you want to export to. Okay, and I'm just going to go to export selection and just select her top root here. I'm going to drag it out of that hierarchy as well, just to make sure this separate from the actual rig as well. And that's good to go, so we're going to export that now. Great, so here we are back in Unreal. Uh, I'm just going to drag in those animations we've just exported into the window here and set a skeletal mesh. Everything else should be good here, so I'm going to import all. Great, so let's actually get these animations hooked up. Um, so I'm going to go to her animation blueprint. Okay, I'm going to go back up to loco. So this is going to come off of the idle walk run. Okay, so I'm going to find her takeoff, so that was Freya launch forward. Drag that in. Um, I'm going to do in air as well. Okay, and then land. Great, so these are the three that we need to get this working. Okay, so conditions. You remember in the last episode I actually created a easy in air in the graph editor here. Um, so get movement component and is falling. These are already built in. That uh, gives us a easy in air variable. So this is already set up and ready to go. So the first thing we're going to ask is, is the character in air? And if so, then we allow the launch. Okay, so I'm going to drag across to this. I'm going to open up the condition here and simply put in is in air and plug that in. Okay, I'm going to go back and the condition for going into the in air jump is going to be time remaining. Okay, so I'm going to search for time remaining here. So time remaining Freya jump launch forward forward, I've spelt that wrong, apologise for that, um, and we're going to do, uh, let's say, less than, so less than or equal to, and just make this really low, so 0 0.1, and plug that in. Now the condition to get into the land state would be the opposite of is in air, so if she's not in air then she can play the, the land animation. So we're going to do is in air, and we're going to do a not boolean, and plug that in. Okay, and then the condition to get back to the idle, or walk or run, would be another time remaining. So time remaining, okay, we'll do another less than or equal to, and plug that in. Okay, so let's play this and see what we've got. Okay, so not too bad. I think obviously part of the problem is we don't actually have this the full loop in yet, which is kind of needed because she kind of just freezes in midair. Um, and also I think the land itself, we need to actually take some frames off that, off the start of that and give it to the previous animation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So in Maya, um, we're actually going to start the land at 15. 
Okay, so the in air is going to come all the way through and come through to this pose here. Okay, so I'll tweak some of the blend values. Um, so it's starting to look a little bit better. So I think one of the problems is actually the physics of this jump is kind of really floaty at the moment. So it's kind of hard to tell what what's my animation and what is the physics not doing what it's supposed to. Um, so well, let's just tweak these values and uh, see where we go from there. So I'm going to open up her character blueprint and see what the gravity is like on this. Okay, so the gravity settings are here and uh, character movement here. So you see here we've got a character, sorry, a gravity scale of two. Um, so I'm going to up this to let's say six. Okay, because I've increased the gravity, I need to give her a bit more of a kick up into the air. So jump Z velocity is what gives the kick up. Um, so I'm going to probably going to double this and then some, so let's say 2100. Cool, let's compile and save and see how that looks now. Okay, not too bad. I think I went a bit mad with the gravity, so let's take that down by a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit more like it. So we get a strong kick off, nice bit of hang time. Okay, I'm just going to take the gravity down just a little bit more, let's say 4.5. Okay, so I'm kind of missing the stretch now for the start of the jump. So I'm going to have a look at the blend in her animation blueprint here. So it's this here. So I've given it quite a large blend. So I'm going to take that back down to 0.1. Okay, it's looking a bit better. You see where we've got that leg kicking off. So when I actually jump while sprinting, you see she just stays in a sprint. I suppose we could quickly hook up what we've got here. So we add another transition, so from Freya Sprint into here. So we can do is in air. Okay, go back up here. So we want to go from the landing into sprint as well. Okay, so if we play this now, I should be able to jump from the sprint as well. There we go, that actually feels quite nice. Alright guys, so this is how the jump is looking. So let's get in there. I've been playing around with the, the blends and stuff. I still feel like this, this center animation here needs to be uh, exposed for a little bit longer. Um, so I could go back into Myra and stretch that out, but luckily Unreal does have uh, the ability to stretch out animations. So this is the animation in question, the in-air. So you can go up to here, and here we have play rate. So if I half that, okay, hit compile and save. Now we basically doubled the length of that center part. Um, so that plays a lot better now. Um, so the only part that's missing in this, oh, in this jump is the full loop. You see, if I jump off something higher, kind of pauses in mid-air but that's dead simple just to put in an extra bit of animation there on a loop to uh, complete this jump animation. So yeah, it's, it's made some good progress, I'm quite happy with it. There's still a bit of a glitch on the land, uh, might be able to sort that out with uh, just adjusting the blending. But yeah, it's looking quite nice. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. In the next video we're going to have a look at montages and caching of state machines. Um, so we're basically going to start adding the attacks into this. Uh, I had a look at the attack animations, I'm not particularly happy with them. Um, I think we can do something a lot nicer with them. Um, so we're going to have a look at those. I've also got an attack in the air, so say so if you, you jumped and then you attacked, she's got this quite nice uh, spinning attack, so we'll get that in as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.